Hello, my name is Aaron Hansen with Intelligent Controls, and we're here today with the Power Trip. One of the most common requests for the HOTS Victron integration, which this trailer is designed to help us kind of flush out any issues, is what about like a, a standard three start attempt? What that means, if you don't know, is if the generator fails to start for whatever reason, it'll try again. And if it doesn't start again, it'll try again. It'll do that automatically. It's pretty common in the generator world to see that. The HOTS has a lot of uh, features kind of built into it. It does not have a three-start attempt. The Victron equipment does not have a three-start attempt. So we added one and we wanted to show you how that works. And we wanted to walk you through kind of the, the way the HOTS thinks about the world and the way Victron thinks about the world, the way the integration works, and also kind of open your eyes to some of the uh, opportunities that, uh, that arise when, when this stuff is talking and we have the data because it's actually pretty darn simple. It's worth pointing out the two components, really, that are making decisions here. One is the servo or the acrono, and it is making the call as to, you know, as to when to start the generator, and it's monitoring the rest of the system. It has a lot, a lot to say about the controls aspect of the whole system. But the ECU on the generator is incredibly smart, you know, for such a small little generator, and it's monitoring atmospheric pressure, uh, to figure out uh, any kind of D-rate that it needs to do. It's looking at the air temperature to figure out how long to run the glow plugs. It's setting the timing for how long to crank the engine. Um, and obviously it's looking for a whole host of different kinds of faults. And then it's feeding all that information, including its RPM and its torque and everything about itself up to the servo. Essentially, there's no way for the servo or the acrono to hurt the generator by like, letting it crank too long. The generator has an ECU, it's got a brain, it's protecting itself. What we can do is we can cycle it and we can clear faults. And so essentially the way that this integration works is the servo tells the generator to start. It's very similar to telling a generator to start with a key. So essentially the GX in that scenario is just a big key. You know, it's telling the, the generator to start and the generator's handling the rest. There's also an enable signal coming out of the uh, ECU. That enable signal is just a closed contact. If it's jumpered, the ECU is on. Every time the ECU powers up, it also runs the fuel pump, which is interesting uh, because that's our primary way of purging uh, the engine itself. A lot of the way that the, the HOTS works is a little bit different than what you're used to on a lot of generators. Auto generators, for example, automatic start capable generators. The HOTS has, you know, like eight different options on how you can start it. In our case, we're using the, the, the CAN bus start sequence, um, but there's still an enable signal, which a lot of times people just leave on all the time. In our case, we've wired that into Relay 2. There's a couple of reasons for that. The main reason when we first got started with this was because we like the idea of being able to clear faults remotely. The other thing that it does is it shuts the generator off and starts it again which runs the, the fuel pumps, which is really nice. So when we run the fuel pumps, we can purge the diesel fuel tank. And, and there's a lot of value in that, especially in a diesel. But regardless, we still have this desire for three starts uh, in, order to, in order to warm it up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cycle off the key, which we do with relay two. We're gonna wait a little bit. The generator is gonna come back online when we turn relay two back on and the fuel pump's gonna cycle, and the generator's gonna try to start again because it sees the world and it sees the conditions, and the conditions are the certain SOC or whatever the situation is, whatever the start command is, is still there. It's gonna try to start again. It's gonna fail again because we have three starts, so we're gonna do the, get to the third one. It's gonna try again, uh, same exact thing. After that, it will time out uh, until somebody uh, goes in and manually starts the generator and then everything's back to normal and and uh, and so it clears itself Which you could do remotely by cycling relay too. So <clears throat> it's pretty robust That means that you get three tries, you know at purging your fuel three tries at your glow plugs if it's cold outside That's yeah, pretty good. And if it doesn't start because of that you also get access to all the alarms as to why uh, It failed to start if 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 they'll show up we should probably talk about how the engine actually is being monitored. So we are actually monitoring RPM through the CAN bus uh, into the servo. And in our case, we're looking for like an 1800 RPM uh, signal. 
after a certain amount of time. So essentially that's our run signal, is that the generator is idling at 1800 RPM. Once it revs up, it goes to 3000 RPM. So we're looking for an 1800 RPM signal. We go to 3000, everything's fine. If it doesn't get there, we assume that it failed to start and we try again. What's interesting about that is that all that information is super easy to get via Node-RED. It's, it's, it's incredibly valuable to have this integration, not only for this, which is a fairly simple use case and, and solution, but for future things where, I don't know, maybe you got a PTO shaft coming off the back of this thing and you're running some hydraulics or you really care about the torque curve or you want to keep it under a certain RPM or I don't know, you know, you tell me. But it's not going to be that difficult to solve because we have all the information coming back into essentially a remotely accessible PLC, namely our, our GX device. So pretty powerful, pretty fun. Pretty easy solution that opens the doors for adaptation uh, and, and really, I think, shows the power of this integration. So thank you, Victron. Thank you, HOTS. We've sure learned a lot uh, in our testing of this on our mobile power trip trailer. Um, the idea of this trailer is that it's a test bed. And so we've been playing a lot with airflow and decibel ratings. There's a lot of things we can do, but it's nice to have an operable generator to test them on. And so if you have something that you would like to see done, we're all ears. Uh, thank you very much, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day.